Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for our first ever Virginia Hospital Center Stakeholders Briefing sponsored by the VHC Foundation. Our community is in the midst of the deadliest health pandemic in 100 years. There may not be a more important time to hear from your regional community hospital. That's why we'll spend the next few minutes together discussing our current healthcare reality, including what we've learned about the coronavirus and what VHC is doing to ensure the best care is available to all our patients today, tomorrow, and in the near future. So let's start at the top. Jim Cole, VHC president and CEO is our first guest. So Jim, can you share some perspective looking back over the past 100 days as to how VHC as a community health system has performed in dealing with this pandemic? Well, Tony, as you know, COVID-19 is a Nova virus. That means it was new. There was a great deal that was unknown. And I would say within the course of about 48 hours, um, our world here at Virginia Hospital Center changed dramatically as we learned rapidly from the CDC how to best protect our patients, protect the community, and, and care for our patients. I mean, one of our um, first steps was basically in order to stop the spread to unfortunately uh, prohibit visitors. Then we set up screening for anyone who came into the, page, into the hospital uh, to ensure that we did temperature checks, um, screening for symptoms, et cetera. And frankly, the, the first few weeks was, um, there was a lot of effort into simply obtaining adequate personal protective equipment, masks, gowns, et cetera, for our staff. Uh, fortunately, we were very successful very early on in securing adequate supplies, uh, thanks to our materials management department and, and frankly, the generous donations from many community members. Uh, but that's a good, that's a good um, jumping off point, uh, Jim. Many individuals and organizations have generously given to the hospital in support of our COVID-19 response. As you mentioned, uh, PPE, as well as cash contributions and meals. Can you share with us how this has impacted uh, our frontline healthcare workers and support service team members? Absolutely. I mean, first at the most basic level, it's enabled those who provide the care to feel safe themselves. You know, um, as I said, this was new and frankly scary to a lot of people. But knowing that we had adequate gloves, gowns, proper mask, so that our staff could care at, at one point for over 150 COVID inpatients and know that <clears throat> through the donation of, of supplies and the funds to buy those supplies, that they could safely provide that care. And the end result was very, very few of our healthcare workers contracted COVID from being here at the hospital. And then the other aspect of it is psychologically, the outpouring of, uh, of food, simply food, to know you had lunch every day, su supplied by a restaurant or a member of the community as a way of simply saying, Th thank you nurse, thank you physician, thank you technician for what you're doing for our community. That, that was such a tremendous and ongoing morale boost for all of our staff. Well, the generosity of this community in support of Virginia Hospital Center is nothing new. Uh, you know, you can't round a corner here on this campus without running into a donor plaque or some recognition of philanthropy. Uh, can you speak to the role of philanthropy as it relates to what we're doing with the outpatient pavilion? Well, I'll go back even further, Tony. Okay. I, I have to remind you that Virginia Hospital Center, Arlington Hospital, began with volunteers and a bake sale. So philanthropy and the community is, is the root of Virginia Hospital Center. You know, we're, we are the only independent healthcare system in this entire region. And I think a reason for that is a strong sense of uh, community ownership 
and likewise the staff feeling a strong sense of obligation to this community. So we're, we're, we're rooted in a mutual sense of ownership with the community and philanthropy. Obviously, that's led to great success for this organization. Uh, we're one of the top hospitals in the country. Uh, outstanding quality is recognized by health grades, CMS five-star rating. And all of that has led to uh, a demand for more inpatient beds. You know, the quality's been recognized, more patients have come, and that is what led to the outpatient pavilion project. Two, two fundamental objectives. One was to move space out of the current tower to permit us to add more inpatient beds to meet that demand. And second, to provide a totally improved experience for outpatients. Uh, the outpatient pavilion will be, a, be the location of our physician offices, outpatient surgery, outpatient imaging, with dedicated parking in and, in and out, and totally designed to enhance the, the outpatient experience. None of that would be possible in this age of uh, economic uncertainty uh, without the ongoing and generous contributions from our donors. Let me, let me pull out a couple of things that you talked about. Independence, high uh, level of uh, care, and also a exceptional uh, patient experience. Those are all three things that separate Virginia Hospital Center. And in fact, um, put Virginia Hospital Center uh, on the radar of the Mayo Clinic. And um, it's my understanding about five years ago, you and the leadership team here made the decision to accept an invitation from the Mayo Clinic to become part of the Mayo Clinic Care Network. So can you tell me a little bit how a little bit about how being a member of the Mayo Clinic Care Network benefits our patients and our clinicians. Yes, and as you know, Virginia Hospital Center is the only health system in the entire Mid-Atlantic region to be a member of the Mayo Clinic Care Network. And that membership provides us with clinical expertise as well as, as research access. Probably the most meaningful direct impact for any patient is that any patient of a physician at Virginia Hospital Center can obtain a second opinion from a Mayo Clinic expert hmm. at no cost to the patient, no cost to the physician. Uh, and it's proven a, an invaluable asset to hundreds of patients each and every year over those five years. And then most recently during the uh, COVID crisis epidemic, We've been able to participate in Mayo uh, research protocols uh, related to plasma and studies with remdesivir and gain access to, to, to drugs and plasma on an expedited basis. So during the height of the pandemic, um, to ensure that there was ample supplies and uh, capacity to take care of COVID-19 patients, you know, the governor had made a decision to uh, uh, ask the hospitals across the Commonwealth to discontinue other medical procedures. And so for a number of weeks, um, Virginia Hospital Center was unavailable, un unable to right, provide right. any additional care. Um, now that's been lifted. Uh, so tell, tell people, is it safe to come back and should they come back? Uh, it's absolutely safe to come back, and for those who have chronic medical conditions, it's unsafe to not come back to see your physician. Uh, on the hospital campus, uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, we have uh, obviously screening for visitors, temperature checks, etc. If a patient is admitted to the hospital, Every patient is tested for COVID-19 immediately. Uh, for patients requiring surgical procedures and certain other procedures, we have immediate COVID testing. And it, it's so important to understand that in physician offices, 
there is adequate PPE now. Uh, there's social distancing. There is the option of telehealth visits. And I'm sure we've all heard, uh, unfortunately, tragic stories in recent weeks of patients with chronic conditions who, who have deferred seeing their physicians, deferred coming to the emergency room, and suffered tragic consequences. So the time is now to get back into your routine healthcare regimen, to see your physician, to have those procedures that are necessary. So last question, um, this is about you. Um, you know, beginning of the calendar year, uh, you had announced that um, uh, 2020 was gonna be your last year as CEO uh, at Virginia Hospital Center. Uh, but then the world, as you said, turned upside down. So uh, could you share with us your intentions uh, as it relates to the request from our board of directors? Certainly. Well, as we said, COVID-19 changed many things, and among them were my personal plans. Uh, obviously, when we began dealing with COVID, there were so many unknowns. Uh, it certainly disrupted the recruiting process for my successor. And uh, frankly, we still face some unknowns from COVID. Uh, we don't know if there's going to be a second wave or a third wave. Um, we've had to maintain uh, uh, a very active stat, uh, standing. So the board asked me to d defer my retirement until the end of 2021, and I intend to do that. And uh, it's great to continue to work with uh, our great team of physicians, staff, executive team here, and to work with a board uh, that has such a great vision for excellence. So I look forward to working through 2021 and uh, ensuring that we're on a good footing when my successor takes, takes over. Well, that's great news. I know the people in the community are gonna be pleased to hear that. So I do wanna thank you, Jim, for spending time with us this afternoon and look forward to talking to you next time. Thank you, Tony.